Osborne Thalia with David Asher and friends. She's a classic gaff cutter built in 1889 and originally raced in Cork, Ireland. More than 1,500 yachts and 16,000 sailors take part in this one-day race. It's windy, so Thalia takes in a precautionary reef. We now tack down the western Solent, needing to avoid hundreds of other boats doing the exact same thing. The first race casualty, a dismasted yacht. How was it out on the bowsprit, Stevie? It was uh, rather damp on the bowsprit. It was quite good fun, a lot of up and down. There was a point when I left the bowsprit completely. Um, and it worried me slightly, as well as there being lots of water around. I was more swimming than holding on. I had one or two close encounters of a third kind. Just missed the front of the boat, but uh, they were going all right. I think most of the people appreciate the slow to tack, but uh, no, it's all right. I'm just uh, thinking about the corner up there. I think it's going to be a bit lumpy. That sir was a big way. We round the iconic Needles Lighthouse, the first turning mark of the course, and head south to St Catharines. It's fantastic. It's really great. But there are a lot of bits of string, and they are all the same colour. We haven't got any winches. <laughs> That's probably the biggest difference. A fresh helm, Emma, took over, now that steering was not quite so heavy. And now we approach St Catherine's Point, where the fleet turns properly eastwards along the southern part, or back, of the island, and we're surrounded by boats in front and behind. Like many proud owners, David likes to find June the sails. We continue passing boats on this southern run. Now it's Jaunty's turn to try and avoid getting soaked during his trip to the end of the bowsprit to secure the flying jib as the first preparation for the jibe. Jibing a boat like this is a little trickier than on a modern yacht. Care has to be taken with preparing the runners without the aid of winches. And then an anxious moment, the runner gets caught in the spreader. But it's safely freed and the runners can be tightened. Sometimes steering the boat is a really heavy job and two pairs of hands are needed to make the boat bear away. Jonty goes up the mast to check the damage to the spreader and is happy to report the damage is marginal and the mast will stay up. We now round the Bembridge Boy, which is the southeast mark of the course, before heading north to enter the eastern end of the Solent and the final leg of the race. We continued beating to cows and stayed away from the island shore to avoid tricky, frequent tacking amongst the more manoeuvrable modern yachts. 